And so now we get to the heart of this course, talking about culture. So we start out asking, how did you learn to tie a shoe? Probably someone taught you or you watched someone else do it until you learn how, or maybe you taught yourself. How about your ABCs? Chances are you learn through the song or watching a television show where they taught this. And how about standing in line? Probably when you were in preschool or kindergarten, one of the things that you learned was how to stand in line because they lined you up for a lot of things. And just think if you were standing in this line and someone pushed their way through the line all the way up to the front of the line, how would you feel thinking about the rules that you learn when it comes to standing in line? Imagine that you are the only one in a movie theater. And then a total stranger comes and sits beside you despite the fact that there are many, many empty seats. How do you feel about that? Chances are you're probably uncomfortable, maybe even creeped out that this person that you don't know, a complete stranger, comes and sits next to you. This relates to something that we call proxemics or our personal space. Proxemics looks at space. So we see here in this diagram, public space, social space, personal space, and intimate space. And this is for people in culture in the United States. And I'm imagining now because of COVID, it's probably changed somewhat, but we know that there are people that we have that will we allow in public space, social space, personal space, and intimate space. And we are very particular about how we manage our areas of space. Train ride anyone? Just look at all of this. Various cultures have different ideas when it comes to space. Exactly. What are some cultural norms about time? If you think about it, being on time, when is it too late, when is something too early, how long things last. This is something that is called chronemics. It has to do with time and the cultural rules that surround time. Within society, there is also variation as protocols and etiquette are determined by culture, gender, age, and social class that define who, when, how, and where on the body one person might touch another and the actor showing sentiments such as kindness, care, compassion, solidarity, and affirmation. And this is known as haptics or it has to do with touch. How do such things as vocal pitch, volume, intonation, etc., vary in conversation? This is what we refer to as paralanguage. Would you consider eating this? A meal of insect larvae might make some Americans vomit or wretch, which shows how powerful cultural beliefs are. They actually provoke a biological response to something that is perfectly digestible, if not healthy and delicious. And this is something that in a lot of societies is considered to be very appetizing as well as nutritious. So we asked the question, where are these rules written?
So let's talk about culture. Nobody is born with culture, although the process of learning it begins at birth. This learning happens both explicitly and implicitly. Culture is learned. And we use the term enculturation, which is the process of learning the cultural rules and logic of a society. Culture is learned by observation. Culture is learned unconsciously. Culture is taught as well as learned. Cultural institutions established for enculturation include schools, medical systems, media, religious institutions that promote concepts central to the culture, rules, regulations, laws, teachers, doctors, religious leaders, police officers, and sometimes military officials promote and enforce what is considered appropriate behavior and thinking. Culture uses symbols. Symbols are something, an idea, object, image, figure, or character that represents something else. And the interpretive theory of culture says that culture is embodied and transmitted through symbols. And if we think about symbols, there are uh, some components to symbols. First, if we look at this particular symbol, it can have various meanings in various cultures. It could be the hang loose symbol. It could be uh, call me. It could be in um, African-American culture. There's the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, which I'm proudly a member of. And this is our symbol. There are many other aspects to this particular symbol. But one of the things we say about symbols is that they can be arbitrary which means that there are no inherent qualities that cause groups to attribute meaning. And the meaning in one culture can be there and have no meaning at all in another culture. Some symbols we say are arbitrary. Other symbols we say are conventional. And that is they have meaning because people implicitly agree. For example, the red light on a traffic symbol or traffic signal means stop. And for example, in the United States, we say uh-uh, meaning no, but in Micronesian islands to say uh-uh actually means yes. So do you get this cartoon when you're looking at this? Well, maybe you don't. You are enculturated to read from left to right. But when the speakers of the Hebrew language are taught to read, such as those who might read this cartoon from a Hebrew language newspaper, they begin on the right and move left. And then that makes sense. Cultures are dynamic and always changing. Because of increased migration caused by globalization, culture is less as a stable, static entity, and more as a process. Because everyone interprets the events of everyday life a little bit differently, culture acts as a dynamic process that helps people adjust to the world that they live in. For example, we see a picture of an Amish woman who is using a cell phone. And there was one time when Amish would not dare use the cell phone. But again, cultures are dynamic and always changing. We know that culture is integrated with daily experience. Culture operates in an interrelated set of social, economic, and belief structures. And these structures create culturally patterned behavioral norms that are natural, or biologically based for all humans. And adopting a cross-cultural perspective, anthropologists can reveal how, quote, unnatural many of our beliefs and actions are. We know also that culture shapes everybody's life. Everybody, everybody 
has culture, whether they recognize it or not. Culture is shared. People make sense of their worlds and order their lives through their participation in social groups. And only those meanings, concepts, and practices that are shared by groups are considered cultural. And these are referred to as cultural constructions. It's like getting a joke. For example, Trevor Noah, popular comedian, tells a funny joke. We barely think about what makes it funny because we have the shared experiences that just we just get it. As Clifford Geertz, anthropologist, talks about in examples of other cultures. Take a look at this slide for just a moment. And when we see this slide, what do you see in this picture? What clues do you have about what is taking place here? Chances are you've guessed that this is something that has become popular in the United States, and that is a gender reveal party where this couple has just burst the balloon. And because we see the pink uh, confetti that is here, we can infer that probably they are expecting a baby girl. You might have clearly been able to recognize in the last slide the picture there of the gender reveal party, but maybe not so much with this picture. This is reflective of a group of Peruvian shaman who joined forces to end the pandemic in 2022. They gathered together in what is called a Pacamama or Mother Earth, asking the forces of nature to end the pandemic. They sprinkle seeds and flower petals over the ground in a circle with the number 2022 inside of it and offered many things to help or the, uh, bring about an end to the pandemic. When I have shown this slide in class, I have students who come from South America who very easily were able to identify that these were Peruvian shamans, but it may not be as familiar to you. Again, because we know that there are shared elements and shared aspects to culture. So do college students constitute a culture? Again, people are capable of interacting and communicating with one another without serious misunderstanding and without the need to explain constantly what their behavior means. For example, with college students, when they use terms and talk about things such as semesters and dorms, comps, quads, RAs, the yard, fraternities, sororities, they're very easily able to relate to one another because there is a common cultural identity. They recognize themselves and their traditions as distinct from other people and other traditions. We know also that culture and nature, that there are cultural habits, perceptions, and inventions that mold human nature. We all have to eliminate but how and where we do it is shaped by cultural traditions. And we end with a pretty unique way that can be found with regard to public restrooms in Japan. Let's watch on this next slide. <laughs> 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 Amazing. <laughs> 